What is going on, Movie Meals? Movie Meals, before we say anything else, pay your actors, pay your writers. Knock this off. I've seen a lot of people uh, uh, going to, uh, you know, a lot of influencers, which I would not say Kyle and I are. We do have a media presence, social media presence, but we, we, we're too tiny. We get no... No uh, deals, no contracts, no nothing. So I think we're going to continue to 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 talk about movies, uh, but more importantly, I think we're going to start the show off with what matters most, which is pay your writers, pay your actors. This is absurd. Bob Iger, who we've supported Bob for a long time, and he's coming out saying the dopiest things I've ever heard in my life. Uh, pay he's your on writers, my crap list. Pay your actors. This is ridiculous. There's no content without your writers and your actors. Um, so I just wanted to say that off the bat. I do need to thank the Movie Meal patrons, Kimberly and Karen, the people that support the show, pay for that. I, I, you gotta. Uh, but we're, we're not a part of no union. Um, if we were, I'd be canceling those contracts right freaking now tell you that right now so don't even come offering because we ain't looking <laughs> we never have <laughs> nope. um, <laughs> never crossed our mind <laughs> we still want to talk about movies and the you know these movies and how important they are for these writers and these actors these guys that are not making mm -hmm. a lot of money who deserve to be who are making these incredible films so we are here to review mission impossible dead reckoning part one um, I got a chance to see it on Tuesday. It was not a special early screening. They just happened to be showing it early, uh, the studio. So I ended up getting a chance to see it in IMAX, which was awesome. I think Kyle did as well. Um, IMAX, so we're baby. Just, we're just going to get into it here. Uh, um, so, Kyle, what were your positives of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1? Um, it's ironic that this movie came out around the time that both of these strikes have come into fruition because it's just a clear example of the power that humans have with making art such as this come to life, where you're able to gather audiences together into a room and be able to have such a great visceral experience through not only acting, not only directing, but just terrific A-plus action sequences that, at least in my screening, easily had people having their jaws dropped open, having people gas as, you know, a character makes a leap of faith in some instances, or does all these crazy stunts themselves, or even if it's not themselves, it's crazy that there's humans doing incredible stunt work in order to make these uh, incredible action sequences pull off so well. So, again, we've been seeing this with, with each Mission Impossible movie. They just take such great care into not only characters, but also just into the action because those are the two big selling points with this franchise. And I think uh, Dead Reckoning is a great example of that. I think that this movie does a great job of having the action have such a great flow, so the pacing isn't hurt, especially for a long movie such as this, but also does a great job at, of incorporating itself well into the story to where it doesn't necessarily feel like action first, story second, but a great balance between the two. Uh, everyone in the cast is terrific, of course. Obviously, Tom Cruise is... Uh, great as always, uh, but also with newcomers such as like Haley Abwell, uh, who I just love seeing in a movie like this again. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen her in any project, so it just warmed my heart to see her just killing it as always. But everyone just, again, has such great chemistry and just uh, has such great character moments, in my opinion, to where it just makes the action even more exciting and worth investing in. And again, it just it just goes to show the power of when humans come together and making something great, it's way better than, you know, whatever studios think AI could ever do. And I don't know if the villain has been, like, shown in trailers or not, so I won't say who it is, but it's also kind of ironic as well if you see this movie and see who the villain is. So I thought that was kind of uh, an ironic touch to it. Uh, Alex, what about you? Mission Impossible has continued on the trend of the villain is very much a sign of the times. Is all I'll say, and I think they do an excellent yep. job. This movie's awesome. It's two hours and what? Let's see here. It's two hours and forty-three minutes of non-stop action. I saw it with my dad. 
as soon as we got to the theater, I said, what'd you think? And he goes, well, that movie had no action in it. <laughs> you know, get, throwing the sarcasm <laughs> right at me here. And it's nonstop. I agree with you. Haley Atwell is such a great addition because um, we we haven't seen her in anything except a small cameo in, uh, in Multiverse of Madness. So I uh, mm. I am very excited for her. This movie is phenomenal. Studios that think AI can do this are dummies. I mean, when you look at just these stunts Tom Cruise does, we give Tom a lot of credit, but you got to look at the stunt coordinators and all these people on set and uh, who who are working really hard, which is why you need to be paying people. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I loved this movie from start to finish. I would love to go see it again with Barbie and Oppenheimer. It's going to be tough. If you couldn't tell, I'm in the middle of a transition move. We're getting across the country, baby. So Ooh. we uh, we we got a lot going on, but I would I want to see this movie again. Seeing it in IMAX was the best choice could ever made. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody brings their A game here. I loved the way the story went. The story left me surprised at times, shocked at times, full of just great, great action and a lot of Tom Cruise running. Kyle, what yes. were your negatives of the film since no film is perfect? I, I, I did notice um, uh, maybe, it, maybe it's something that has happened in the past when it comes to McQuarrie's direction, but I did notice... Uh, a pattern in this movie to where when you're ha when characters are having intense conversations between each other it was just a lot of cutting back and forth to characters faces just being in the center of the shot a lot of the times um it wasn't necessarily a negative but when i just see it as like a noticeable pattern in a three hour long movie it just gets kind of boring after a while even though the conversations are good the script is well written where at least that is the excellent part of them but it's just a repetitiveness when it comes to those types of uh, scenes, those types of moments to where it was just kind of bothering me at times. But I also wonder if that's because of, you know, this movie being shot during COVID as well. Maybe they had to do it for those up close face to face scenes or maybe it was just a creative choice. Um, this movie, in a way, is kind of having these characters be a lot on edge and feeling almost isolated in their own moments, especially within these conversations. So maybe that was the creative choice. I'm not too sure. It's just a guess. But uh, like I said, in a three-hour movie, when I see that becoming uh, a thing in the repetition, so to speak, I it just was noticeable. It wasn't a huge bother, but just something that I would say maybe change it up at times. But otherwise, like I said, I think this movie is... Just a lot of fun to watch, and it's similar to what we were talking about with a Tom Cruise movie last year, Top Gun Maverick. This is why movies need to feel as real and authentic as possible, especially with a human touch to it, because otherwise you're just not going to get this this very great feeling that Alex and I are both experiencing when it comes to the movies. So studios just, again, need to take notes about making movies, because this is the direction that we should be going in, not the other way around. So... Those are my thoughts. I agree with you. Macquarie does love his close-up face shots and intense conversations. It does happen a lot. It is a bit yeah. jarring. Um, I love the movie. It's nonstop action, but I do think you feel it. I think I got towards the beginning of the final action sequence, and I was like, wow, we probably still have a good 40 minutes of this sequence, and it's barely started, yeah. and I've been here for two hours. So you feel it. It's just up to you if that bothers you or not. I definitely noticed the length, but I did not necessarily not enjoy the length because uh, I will just love this nonstop action. Um, mm -hmm. That's pretty much it for my nitpicks. I think this movie is is excellent. I think it's phenomenal, and I cannot wait for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2. Part yeah. dos. Amigos, you know what I mean? Um, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. Anything else, Kyle, or are you good? Pay the actors, pay the writers. Uh, we're going to be saying that nonstop in a lot of our videos, if not all of our videos moving forward. And, yeah, just come on, industry. Let's let's remember why movies are awesome here. Yep, pay your actors, pay your writers. Um, yeah, I think that's the, the way to end it here. Uh, so... For everybody watching, yeah. thank you. And as always, <laughs> thanks for watching, Mom. See you guys.